Hey there, it's John Weisenberger. I want to welcome you to module number one of Profitable Time Management, where today you're going to learn how to identify the biggest time bandits that suck up hours of your precious time every day so you can learn how to avoid them and get more things done. Then after we finish module one, we'll move on to part two in module number two, where I'm going to show you 15 proven time management strategies that if you implement them and follow them daily, weekly, and yearly, I promise they'll drive new levels of productivity unlike anything you're currently experiencing in your life and your business. And that means you'll have more time to do those things that can lead to more money or more time with your family or more time for anything else you've been wanting to do with your life. So with all that said, let me begin by asking you a question. And that question is, why did you get into business for yourself? Was it to be your own boss? Was it to choose your own hours or perhaps spend more time with your family that you didn't get to do in your previous job? Or was it to spend more time playing golf or sailing or doing other hobbies that you love? Well, chances are you answered yes to all of these questions, right? You had a lot of reasons for wanting to be your own boss because you thought it would free up your time to be able to do more things. But in reality, running your own business is quite difficult and it does consume an awful lot of your time. And I'm guessing that these days you're wondering where all your time goes, why you spend 12 hours a day at work and you barely make a dent in your to-do list and why you never have your weekends free anymore. So does this sound familiar? Well, if it does, then I think this course is going to change how you look at the use of your time. And I think it'll give you a whole new perspective on the way you and your employees, if you have any, actually use your most valuable resource. And that is your time. So with all that said, let's dive in. Now, we already know that time is a key resource for you and your business and that it's also a key resource in your personal life too. So being able to harness and leverage time is the only real way you can enjoy life and have a profitable business all at the same time. And to me, it's somewhat surprising how most business owners carefully manage their financial resources and, and all their other business resources. You know, they pay attention to the performance of the output of the business and they pay attention to their marketing plans and financial budgets. Everything's tracked and traced, but in the end of the day, they don't really pay attention to where all their time goes. So what most business owners don't realize is time and the time of all their employees requires that same attention and diligent management, uh, just like cash flow does, right? And it's really interesting that, for example, various time management studies have put the actual business productivity that is produced by most small businesses at somewhere between 25 minutes and four hours per day which means that most businesses could be wasting as much as 50% of the available time they have. Now, no matter which number you believe describes your business, that's still a lot of room for improvement, whether you're useful for 25 minutes a day or whether you're actually you know, producing good output four hours per day. Either way, that's a lot of room for improvement. So what you need to remember is, is that time will never manage itself. The decision to make a proactive effort to manage your time must come from you. And once you're committed to taking ownership for your own time and the management of that time, well, then there's a variety of tools available to help you manage it. So before we get into those tools and those 15 time management strategies, let's take a look at where most time gets wasted, what I like to call the five time bandits. So when you look at the top five culprits of time theft, there's chances are you have no idea what they are. Most people have no idea where their time actually goes. And you're likely frustrated by the fact that you could spend 10, 12, or even 14 hours per day working and still not make a dent in your to-do list. Even worse, when we're too busy and overloaded with work, we often switch into being in reactive mode and we, we can't make it to the bottom of the pile and we end up handling every issue and making every decision at the very last minute. So one of the great benefits of choosing to become proactive with your time management is that you can become proactive in all the other areas of your business too. For example, um, when you're being proactive with your time management, you can have more time to take steps to grow your business to other activities such as networking or building new products and launching them or establishing systems that will make you more productive. So before we investigate where your time actually goes, let's take a look at the top five culprits of, of modern day time theft. So time theft culprit number one is your email. How, how many times per day do you check your email? Is it uh, 100 times, 500 times is Outlook or your mail tool constantly running on your computer desktop and it's on your phone constantly pinging you the new mail has arrived, right? Email, whether it's internal, external, personal, or business, it clogs up your day like no other communication channel. 
And for many of us, it's entirely possible for us to spend our whole day just reading and responding to emails without even glancing at our current to-do list. The number of emails sent and received each day by the average person is now in the hundreds. And if you multiply that by, let's say, an average of a minute or two minutes per message, you could be spending multiple hours on email alone every single day. So learning to manage how you process email is a big step in becoming more efficient with the use of your time. Now, time theft culprit number two is your actual cell phone. And, and there's no denying that cell phones have created convenience in our lives and they give us security and the luxury of working from just about anywhere. But cell phones have also created a society that expects you to be uh, accessible and reachable on the phone at any time of the day, or at least they expect you to be able to receive and respond to a text message, right? So your cell phone not only robs you of your time during the day, but it also robs your time during the evenings and on weekends and even when you're not at work, right? So again, a cell phone is a bit of a mixed blessing that between the email that arrives, the text messages, the voicemails, if you let it, it can dictate how you manage your time during the day. The next time theft culprit, number three, could be your open door policy. So if you have employees in your business and you make it easy for your staff and associates to interrupt you, well, they will. You know, too often an open door policy that's encouraged to create, you know, clear communication channels, but instead it creates a clog of employees who just wind up at your door seeking immediate answers to their non-urgent issues. And if you're a solo entrepreneur, let's say working from home, even your children and spouses can be a constant source of interruption if you don't establish clear guidelines on when you can be interrupted. So we're going to talk more about how to handle these types of situations later. But for right now, let's just capture all the sources of time theft. So your open door policy would be number three on the list. Number four is meetings. So how many times have you been to a meeting that was scheduled to be an hour and then it ended up lasting three hours? Or how often do you attend meetings that were really unnecessary, right? Or a meeting that kind of ran off topic and, and didn't really accomplish what it was set out to do? We all know meetings can be a huge source of wasted time, and that's valuable time. It's your time. So if your employees are calling meetings or you're having meetings with potential prospects that are going to waste your time, you need to get a way to manage that. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the 15 uh, strategies in module number two. But as a business owner or a senior management, your day may consist of back-to-back -back meetings, leaving only your evening hours to complete the tasks that you should have been working on during the day. So when it comes to the top five culprits of time theft meetings, at number four are an important thing that you need to get a handle on and we'll talk about that and how to do that more a little bit later. Lastly, the worst time theft culprit of them all, well, that's often ourselves, right? It's you. Everyone has daily habits that sabotage their ability to work productively and, and efficiently. In fact, many entrepreneurs and business owners can't seem to separate business hours from their leisure hours. For example, some get caught up in a time warp while surfing the internet. Others, and mainly these are overachievers, they become paralyzed by perfectionism or procrastination. So the question is, why is that? Well, mainly it's because many people just don't have the tools or the training or the knowledge about how to schedule or structure their time in a way that fits with what their working style is. And we're going to talk about that later as well. But the thing to remember is you are in control of your time, and the worst culprit of wasting time often is ourselves. So... A little assignment for you. Let me ask you this. Where does your time go? Do you really know where you're spending all your time today? Well, that's what you need to do and you need to find out before you can take the actions to reclaim control of the time that you're wasting. So um, let's review it uh, quickly here. So far, we've seen that time is a resource that should be managed and managed as carefully as you would manage your cash. We looked at the top five culprits of time theft, so our next step is to take a good and honest look at how you spend your time each day. Then once you understand your daily patterns and habits, then you can begin to implement the strategies from this training that will take you to being a better time manager. So the assignment I have for you is this. It's three parts, and what I want you to do is to start a daily time audit. I've given you a worksheet that you downloaded that you can use to record how you spend your time for three working days in a row. Now, it doesn't matter which three days, just three consecutive working days. And you need to be honest and specific. You need to include the time you spend in transit between appointments. You need to log the time um, that you're getting groceries, taking kids to soccer practice, wh whatever. Everything you do, whether it's surfing the web, interacting with clients and colleagues, you even the time you spend at home in the evening, you need to log it all for three days 
And the more information you can record, the easier it will be to analyze your time management in the next step, number two, which is where we'll start categorizing the time you've, you've used. So after you've recorded your time for the three days, then I want you to sit down with all three sheets in front of you to identify the following using different colored highlighters or put a number by each row in the sheet here and write down the total hours that you've added up for those three days. So that's time in public transportation or travel, eating, including the time it took you to prepare the food, time you spent running personal errands, time you spent on exercising or working out, time you've spent watching TV, uh, sleeping, including any afternoon naps you take, uh, using a computer, being with friends and family, emailing, including checking, reading, and returning messages. I want you to log all the time you spent talking on the phone, including checking and returning messages. As we talked about, I want you to record the time you spent in internal meetings, in external meetings, doing administrative work, uh, client work, and even non-client administrative work, like maybe uh, processing a payroll or paying bills. But the key thing is, take the three time sheets that you kept for the three days, tally up all the various hours uh, that you spent in each one of these categories, and then in step number three, we're going to use the other sheet that you downloaded, and you're going to look for patterns for where you spent your time. So now that you identified all that time and tallied it up in step number two, I want you to go through the sheets and one more time and identify if you spent enough time, too much time, or too little time on each of those main tasks. Then based on your observations, I want you to answer the following questions. And those questions are, what patterns do you notice about how you spend your time during the day? I want you then to write down the four highest priorities in your life right now and look at how does your timesheet reflect these priorities. Are you spending the time where you want to spend it based on the priorities in your life? The question then becomes, if you have more time, what would you do with it? If you had less time, what wouldn't you do? How would you trade off and take the time away from some things and apply it to the other higher priority things? Number five the question you should ask yourself is, could you remove the items in question four and add the items in question three, right? Why or why not? So if you take the time to do this exercise and go through the collection of your time logs, the categorization of all your time, and then doing the analysis in step number three, then you'll be well prepared for figuring out if procrastination part of the problem, uh, how much is procrastination a problem, and once you finish these three steps and exercises and seriously think about how you've been spending your time, when you're ready, then go on to module number two in this training where we'll cover the 15 time management strategies that can help you find more time to spend on the important areas. And I look forward to seeing you there in module number two.